Hi everyone. I've done evolution simulation projects before, where the genome, represented as a sequence of numbers, changes through natural selection, making creatures more adapted to their environment. Although an overall picture looks good, sometimes beautiful, the creatures themselves look like this. But why can't they look like abstract beautiful images, or like natural plants, or not quite natural ones, or like strange alien vegetation? The idea is simple. At the input of the algorithm, we give a sequence of numbers, and at the output, we get an image of a plant. Next, we can tune in natural selection, and eventually, we will get a gallery of beautiful plants. Besides, I didn't use combinations of pre-drawn layers, as it's done in many fashion collections, but a real generation, where the entire image is formed using simple circles of different colors and sizes, located in the right places. The algorithm is ready. If you are interested in a more detailed description of the algorithm, text me in the comments, and I will make a video with a more detailed analysis. The trick of the algorithm is that each time, by providing the same genome, we will get a bit different image, since the genome doesn't set the image, but the plant itself, forms slightly differently each time. The genome consists of 340 bytes, so you can count the number of genome variants. But since not every gene linearly impacts the result, the number of different variants is somewhat less. In other words, we have a 340-dimensional hyperspace, and by moving there, we will get different plants. And somewhere in this multidimensional space, there are places where plants turn out to look beautiful. But these places are not so many. If we randomly poke a hyperfinger into this hyperspace, we will get plants like these. Let's conditionally accept that successful plants are one in a trillion, and there are another trillion ones right beside it, almost indistinguishable from it. As a result, there are still a lot of unique results. Crossing is used to obtain a new plant. Each cell of the descendant's genome randomly receives a value from the first or from the second parent. And at the end, one mutation is added, randomly changing one of the values. Let's try to cross two dissimilar plants. I would like to note that only one specific gene isn't responsible for each trait. More often, several genes influence it indirectly. Therefore, the resulting descendant can be a combination of the traits of the ancestors, or also get some unexpected trait. Let's run natural selection and enjoy the results. Yet, there's an interesting question that arises. For natural selection, we need a function that determines which plant is better. How to do so? Actually, there's no way. The problem is that humans themselves don't know why they consider something beautiful. The concept of beauty depends on the culture, changes over time, and is very subjective. There is no universal way to describe it in an algorithm. The only environment where selection for beauty may occur is the consciousness of a person. It is a person acting as a fitness function, determining who is worthy of further reproduction. If you have a different opinion, leave your ideas in the comments. So, natural selection is cancelled in this project. Let's give way to artificial selection. I manually coded the genomes of several plants and, sitting in a comfortable chair, began to select new species by crossing these plants, periodically adding plants with a random genome. It isn't so easy to do this. It's virtually impossible to predict the result of crossing in advance, and most of the results obtained are discarded. To get what you have planned, sometimes you have to proceed with dozens of intermediate options, and you may end up not getting what you were willing to achieve. But, there will something interesting as well. 
So far, this is a prototype, and no rules have been written yet. Let's discuss one of the rules. Let's assume that a user got a unique plant by crossing it with any other, and then crossing it with the resulting plant, then again crossing it with the resulting plant, and so on, after a few iterations we will get an almost exact copy. The difference will be one or two bytes. But if we introduce a ban, for example, you can't cross plants with genome matching three quarters or more. Each plant becomes unique in its own way. Getting a copy of it will be a problem. You can even give a unique flower to someone. Is such a rule necessary? Or maybe there are some other rules to follow? Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments. The project code is posted for subscribers on Patreon. Well, that's all for now. Bye everyone.